From the June 15, 1876 Dutch Flat Forum newspaper, I have this article about a visit to Lover's Leap. The prospecting party that started out last Thursday week under the supervision of Messrs. Frost and Brannan in search of scenery for stereoscopic views was a success so far at least as magnificent scenery was concerned. Immediately after leaving Alta, a few sharp turns, the road hugging the mountainside, we arrive at a point overlooking the Green Valley Mines and where finer scenery could not be found in California. Here are the rocks towering above us, and we are on the verge of a lofty height, with a sheer wall below us down which we glance to the chasm 2,600 feet, where houses are dots and men mere specks on the earth's surface. There winds the American River, like a belt of precious metal, as its yellow waters glisten in the sun. To the right and the left, the great canyon, dark, hazy, rich in foliage, awful in depth and distance, opens up to the vision and then diminishes and is lost in its own shadings miles away, while the mountains forming its walls rise far above and beyond us, and the forests on their tops fringe a new and elevated horizon against the sky. It is a glorious scene. We stand upon the precipice, and it seems as though an easy spring would send us clear off the wall upon the green turf below. About us tower giant mountains, peak upon peak, crest upon crest, crowned with forests of living green, and beyond all the snow-capped Sierra in the far distance appear and disappear in the mists and clouds which play about their heads. At our feet are wooded slopes and a smiling vale, a turgid river, and a bright sunlight relieving both from the gloom and shadow of the awful hills. We no longer wonder at the enthusiasm of artists over Placer County scenery, no longer wonder at the utter failure to depict in words of grandeur, beauty, and inspiration of the scene, and as we move on, new points of view and new glories of scene open up. To the right and the left are to be seen evidences of man's conflict with the hills to make them yield the precious ores. In the distance on the mountainside is seen the central Pacific, whose train climbs with labored effect, every foot of which is a marvel of engineering skill. But, as the subject is inexhaustible, we may as well stop right here by adding that all the pleasure derived from the trip was, like any other, gained by overcoming many difficulties. Who ever heard of anyone having a good time but what they paid dear for it? Nevertheless, we all got what we went for, and tarried till twilight let her curtain down and pinned it with a star, which was the only warning we had that it was high time to leave, which we did in less time than it takes to pen this, and the party, numbering about fifteen, join in one accord in saying that the day was pleasantly and profitably spent.' 